What are we looking at right now? So this is onions. Onions, okay. So here we have various treatments that we'll be applying to the crop to control a disease. So we have different, we have six different treatments. Uh, oh, in this plot. In this plot here. So we'll be putting different uh, chemicals on them to control a disease called downy mildew of onions. Wow. And is that a large problem in this area? It's not a large problem, but it's very devastating if it comes. So we use the, we use the weather station and things like that equipment to help predict. Um, disease development or if a disease is what the parameters are that it could become a problem later on. Um, the problem with downy mildew of onions is when it'll infect the onion and you won't see it until two weeks later until it sporulates and comes back. Before it's too late. Before it's too late, yeah. So you need to put on a preventative uh, fungicide application to prevent that from happening. Wow, and yeah. is the main research you conduct here for the Holland Marsh area? because that's the type of soil you're researching in? Yes, but it would be applicable to other places that grew onions or carrots. Um, if you had that problem, the forecasting system or the products that are uh, registered would control that disease as well. And what are the main crops grown in the Holland Marsh? So the main crops that are grown are carrots and onions. That probably makes up about 80% of, really? of the acreage. Wow. And people are really looking for local fresh ingredients and, and this is where most of Toronto gets them from. Yes, we, we provide uh, most of the vegetables, or most of the carrots and onions that are, that are consumed in Ontario are grown in this area. That's amazing. So is this a root of an onion? So that's, this is the actual onion here. So there are the roots and this is what would turn into the bulb. So we grow what they call long day cooking onions. Oh, okay. Wow. And is that the variety? No, that's the type of onion. Type of onion? So there's different long day onions in Texas. In Georgia, they grow what they call short day onions. Okay. So these want the long days. So we just passed the summer solstice. So we had almost 15 hours of, of sunlight or daylight. And that's what makes these develops, these onions develop bulbs. That's really interesting. And what variety do you have planted here? This is a variety called Catskill, which is a relatively new variety. What we try to do is grow varieties that growers are growing as well um, in the area. We want to use something that they may use in the future or are currently using. And would you ever do a plot the same year that's uh, both onions but different varieties to see how um, the application of what you're trying affects them differently? So part of the work that we do is we have a trial over there that has 35 different varieties of onions. Really? I are, have no idea there were that many varieties. Yes, there's probably more than that, but what we're trying to do with that is try to find onions that are suited to growing here. They might be developed for a different region or uh, a region farther south. Most of the onions are developed in the United States. So we're trying to find onions and carrot varieties that will work for our growers in this region here. That is very cool. And so what is the station setup you have here? These here that we're looking at are different types of spore traps. If we were on the back side of them, but they face into the wind. But if we look, there's a tiny hole and that is connected to a motor that's drawing in air. And then what it's doing is collecting that air sample into a little vial that we can then look at and use uh, PCR technology to help identify spores um, that are microscopic that we can then predict whether there's actually disease in the air that could potentially infect the crop. So this is a similar unit here, has the same setup, but it runs on a tape that runs for seven days. Oh, so wow. Every, every few minutes the tape moves, so you have uh, over a period of time you can tell if spores are active at night or during the morning hours, things like that. So, and then we also use this weather station here to help with our disease forecasting system. So we have a rain gauge, we have leaf wetness sensors, we have temperature sensors throughout the crop that we can use to help um, in disease prediction models. That is just fascinating. I had no idea how much goes into research. Yes, so this is connected to the Wi-Fi in our building. Wow, really? Yes, and we also have ones that are connected. They have a cellular program so we can download the information uh, remotely. That is so cool. Yes, very interesting. And how many acres do you have for research land here? So we have about nine acres, which doesn't sound very much. We might be the smallest research station in Canada 
Um, but you do a lot with that. But nine we do acres a lot with that nine acres. acres. So we also rent a small piece of land um, from a grower down the road, and we also do research in growers' fields. Depending on if there's a problem in their field that we don't have here at the research station, we can conduct the research at their at their farm. Are growers in Ontario able to contact you to potentially help work with research? Yes. So we we'd like to work with as many carrot and onion growers as possible to try find solutions for their problems. Oh my goodness! So these are red onions. Wow! So these will grow to be ball bread onions similar to what the yellow cooking onions that we saw earlier are. So amazing. I've never seen onions in a field before. And how far along are these onions? So these onions would be just about half grown. Okay. Maybe a little bit less than that. So when onions are mature, they'll fall over. Really? So once you have a bulb, they'll bring, they'll start taking the nutrients from the top of the leaves. The neck will become soft, and the leaf will, and the plant will fall over. And that's how you know they're ready. And to that's harvest. how you know they're going to be ready to harvest. And to harvest, you just pull them out. To harvest, we lift them out of the ground. So we'll lift out one bed at a time, and then oh, put okay. them into a windrow. We'll let the tops dry completely down, and then come and take the tops off and put them into those wooden pallets. Oh, okay. And then they're stored for sale in barns such as that across the road. Now, what is this right here? So these are irrigation pipes. Wow, and do these run through all of your fields? So we usually, we have enough pipes to put into all of our trial areas. And do you usually have to irrigate? It all depends on the year. Yes, completely. We, we hope not to, but generally every year we end up irrigating some of our crops. Would it be usual for onion and carrot growers to irrigate their fields or just depends on the farm and the operation? In our area, it depends on the farm and operation and depends on the weather like everything. So um, we used to not irrigate very much. People have invested in irrigation as an insurance policy when it doesn't rain in order to ensure they have a, a good crop at harvest. And that makes sense as cranberry growers um, invest in these to come as an insurance policy also to produce a better berry. Yes. So these, we, we use a sprinkler type system that would sit like, well, we can look at one in here that's already set up, but these have sort of been taken out um, because we're trying to run the robot in here. Do you ever have to tile your fields? So most of the fields here are tile drain in order to ensure the, the water can get away from the crop. And would that be common for Ontario? People mostly will invest in, in, in tiling. Um, of, of carrot and onion valves just because it's a high value crop so it's worthwhile in the long run to invest in, in time. And how do you measure carrots and onions? It wouldn't be by bushel, would it be by pound? We measure by bushels. Oh yep. really? We try to, yep, everything is harvested in bushels per acre. And how many bushels would a plot? So in, in not a plot but a grower would try with a, for a thousand bushels an acre okay. uh, of, of a harvest for That's onions. That's quite a lot. That is a lot, but there's a lot of money that goes into that as well. So Yes, and um, you have to be able to make that return. Yes, and carrots would probably get about 1,500 bushels an acre would be a, a reasonable uh, yield or higher um, in terms of the amount of value that there is in that. Oh, okay, wow. And, well, I suppose since they're much larger crops, your bushel comes a lot faster also. Yes, it can. That's the idea. That's then, where you're making money. When when the bushels come fast, that's when you're going to make your money. Then small wheat kernels. That's right. Trying to fill sure. up a bushel. Yes. Except we're only growing hundreds of acres of carrots. We're not growing thousands of acres of wheat. True. <laughs> I guess it would be relative. Yes, for sure. So what robot would this be? And, and what is it doing? So this is the Nexus goat. And what it's doing is mapping the field in order to later come back and then pick weeds. So right now it's taking images and once the images are processed, then it'll come back and it all has three uh, robotic arms that will pick the weeds. That is very cool. And eventually, would this robot be able to operate without a person here? Yes, the idea is that it would, it would operate without a person here. Um, someone could watch it remotely uh, through the camera systems and stop it if anything uh, were to go wrong. That's but you amazing. Can see it's turning slightly on its own to make sure that it's maintaining that straight line. And how long do you think that it will be until farmers are able to implement this as a, a, a practice in their operation? So this is in the late stages of prototype development, but there are other robots um, from other companies that are, that are being used uh, in different parts of the world. And it's only a matter of time before they're adopted to Ontario agriculture, I believe. That is very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome.
So this is what the irrigation pipe would look like in the field? Yes, this is set up um, in case it doesn't rain for several weeks, then we have the ability uh, to put the irrigation on. We have an underground system that comes from the canal at the far end um, on a pump that we can turn on, put sprinklers in, and then we can put on as much irrigation as we want. Very uh, cool. Depending on the, depending on the situation. Here we have uh, a plot that we're going to grow canola on that we're looking at controlling a disease called club root, which affects the roots and makes the crop unmarketable. The idea behind adding the calcium, which is the white areas that you see here, is to raise the soil pH above seven, and that will help to limit the amount of disease that, that shows up. So we're trying to use an unconventional, we're trying to use a fertility program to help control the disease. This is part of a graduate studies master's program. That's amazing. And would you have graduate students from just the University of Guelph or yes, all over? Yes, we, we all work for a professor at the university and they're all part of her graduate program. Thank you so much for watching today's video and thank you for giving me a tour of what you do here. It's truly remarkable. Thank you for coming. We're glad to have you, Kate. And if you're interested, all of our research is summarized in our muck vegetable cultivar and research report, which is put out and is also available on our website, which is in the link below, I believe. Wow, that is very cool. I will definitely be taking a look at this. All right, thank you. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn more about how your food gets to your table. Thank you. Bye. Bye.